Let's now uncomment section three and see what's to be further developed. Okay, let's do that. Select the section and then control forward slash. Okay, you can see that now everything still compiles. You can see the two string method. We have done that in the previous section. So that one should work well. However, you can see that we are trying to call the equals method over here. Now, the equals method we are calling here, you can see the context object is BD06. And if you look at that BD06 was declared in line number 13, it was declared of type birthday. So that means we are calling the version of equals from the birthday class. If you go to the birthday class, you can see that at the moment, as is, we don't have any overridden version of the equals method. So what does that mean? That means the equals method is going to be inherited from the object class. And remember when we talked in the lecture, in the object class, the equals method does not compare anything sophisticated. It only compares the references of the context and the argument objects, which means if I go to the uh, tester again, when you say bd 6 equals bd13, so that means we're going to compare only the references of 06 and 13. It's as if we said BD06 equals equals BD13. Okay. I will show you that also in the breakpoint in just a moment. Okay. Now, if you go back to the PDF over there, you will see that the expected output from there would be we should have true and false. Okay. That's the expected output because when you say BD06 and BD13, you can see BD06, June 16. BD13 is also June 16. However, they're different objects. They're separate objects, which means the addresses are different, but their contents are the same. So they are they should be considered as equal. On the other hand, 07 and 13. So in this uh, in this case, 07 and 13, they are different objects and also their contents are also different. So now the is equal uh, the equals method should return false. Is it really the case that it's going to return true and false? Let's see. At the moment, remember, we don't have any overridden equals method in the birthday class. If you execute it, you will see that it tells us false and false rather than true and false. Okay, so let's see why it is the case. Okay, let's now put our breakpoint in line number 38. Double click on the blue uh, uh, bar over here. And then you can click on the bug button over here. If you do that, remember my decision and say yes. Okay. You can see that the execution pause at this point over here. So now we would like to step into. So you can see that you got different options here. You can either step over. Step over is simply just going to execute to the next line, which means we don't pause in the current line. So in this case, we want to see how the equals method is going to be executed. So we say step into. If you do that, the string builder over here is because we got string literal over there to be printed out. So we just have to say step over for now. Okay. So now what the string buffer, what the string builder just shown is just how this particular string literal was built. That's a little bit like sidetrack. Okay. Let's step into it again. Okay. And now this time we're really going to see the right hand side of the expression over here to see how the equals method is executed. If you say step into again, so now you can see that we call the equals method again. If you call the equals method over here, when we say step into, it actually brings us to the object class. Remember, the object class is a superclass of every class in Java. And the object class does have a default version of definition for the equals method. In this case, it's simply going to return this equals equals objects. And now if you go back there, this is simply BD06. And the other objects obj over here is bd13. So calling this bd06 equals bd13 is as if we said bd06 equals equals bd13. So they're only comparing the references by default because we have not overridden the version of equals method in birthday. So how should we fix it? Override it. Okay, let's stop the debugger over here and let's go back to the Java perspective. Okay, go back there. And let me close the object class over here. So now let me at the same time also build this up into the J units so we can really uh, see things will actually work on both uh, both sides, both the console application and the J unit test. So this will be number three. 
and we go to the test over here, and then I would say at test public void test 03. This is what I need. And now I just want to make sure I define 06 and 07. I can just copy from before 06 and 07. Because each test method is in, uh, executed independently. So you just have to build up the relevant objects. Okay. So now, because now we're in the JUnit test, we don't want to do any console interaction. So now we're going to turn this into uh, over here. We want to make sure that's really uh, June 16th. So we can say assert equals. And then we can say we expect that to be June 16th. Okay. That's what we expect to have. Okay, there's a typo there. Okay, that's uh, 07 and 13. Okay, let's do that, those, those two as well. So now this should be 07 and we have 13. 07 should be July 17th, July 17th, and that should be June 16th. Okay. So how do we assert that these two things are equal? Well, we can simply do, let's say, assert true. Okay, let me just remind myself what it is. So you can have 06 and 13. Assert true. BD06 dot, you can see equals is over there, dot equals BD13. And also 7 and 13. Okay, let's convert that into there as well. 07 and 13. Okay, so now we do expect because you can see that uh you can see that 06 and 13 they are of the same contents June 16 and June 16. So we do expect them to be equal ideally, and then for June's uh for uh BD 07 which is July 17th and BD 13 you can see July 17 versus June 16 they should not be different uh they should not be equal. So now I should say assert false. So this test should pass, but you wouldn't because we haven't overridden the equals method yet. Execute this, you got red bar, that's fine. However, if you double click on this, you can see that it is exactly this method over here that this uh, exactly this assertion that failed because it does not return true at the moment from equals, but we're gonna make sure it returns true. Okay, so now let's go to our birthday clock, let's define the equals method. Let's do that after the uh, string, to string method. Similarly, so now we can just type equals, control space, you can see that uh, it tells us to choose that one there. So now we're going to override the equals method. And remember what we did in the class. So the way we define the equals method is gonna be quite standard. So now we're gonna say in the previous three cases, first of all, we'd say if this equals equals objects, in this case, we're comparing simply with itself. In that case, of course, that would be just true. And there are two cases that might make it false. If either OBJ is just now, the current objects, this can never be false. Oh, sorry, the current objects, this can never be null because if it is null, you will say null dot equals something. You would have got some null pointer exception. So that's just another issue. So now if either object is null or this dot get class not equal to obj dot get class. In this case, return false, okay? And now if we can reach this point over here, that means they are of the same type and both of them are not null. So we can say, uh, birthday other is do a cast you can say uh, birthday obj so now how do we compare the contents of the uh, birthday uh, apparently what the way we compare is we're gonna compare by the attributes month and day okay so why don't we do that we can say return this dot get month equals equals, we can use equal equals here because it returns integer. So comparing primitive type, you got only one option, equals equals. Equals equals other dot get month 
and also both must be true. This dot get day equals equals other dot get day. Okay, that's what we have. So that's uh, not so difficult. Hopefully, I think uh, as I said before, these three cases are really standard. Okay. However, this one here, make sure you do the cast. Otherwise, you cannot simply, if you forget about the cast, it's not going to work. So you have to review the lecture slides to see why this is not okay. Simply because OBJ was declare of type objects and the object class did not declare anything called get month or get day. To really make sure this is available for us to call, we have to do a cast, okay? So now if you go back to the uh, First of all, tester over here, let's see what we get. Execute it, we got true and false. So this is, this is now correct. Also, if you go back to the JUnit test, which we do something similar, but this one can be automated. So we don't have to uh, compare the output in the console with our eyes every time. If you execute the JUnit test, it gives you a green bar, okay? So, so far you can see we have accumulated four tests, okay? 